What is going on, California Fishing Life fam? I hope everybody has been doing well since the last time we saw each other. A little bumpy in the road there, but if your day is not good, I hope your day gets better. If you are new here to the California Fishing Life family, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Be part of the California Fishing Life fam. Let's grow together. Let's learn together. Let's fish together. Today, we are going out of an Orange County boat. So Orange County slash LA County, it depends on the length that you go, but typically the three quarter days aren't doing so well. If you want good three quarter day slash full day action, you'll have to go to like Central California, Santa Barbara, Oxnard, Ventura, or even uh, up a little bit more like Morro Bay. I just wanted to get out today, so it's going to be a little fishing experiment, see what we can catch today. And we're here just hanging out. The boat leaves at 6 o'clock and it's about 5.30 in the morning. We're going to stop in a little bit, get some bait at the bait barge, and then we're going to head out to our fishing destination. So we are now approaching the bait barge and the bait barge is where the boats get their live bait for the day. Soon we'll see the boats loading up on the live bait. By the way, if anyone has any tips and tricks on how to hook anchovies without them flying off the hook even when you soft pitch them, that'll be greatly appreciated. Let me know in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. Oh, and also there were a lot of first timers that were on this boat, which is really awesome. I love seeing when new people go out and fish. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be shy. A majority of the time, a lot of people are willing to help you out. And that's what I learned with the fishing community. And if I could give any advice to anglers, whether you're new, intermediate, or you consider yourself a professional, just be humble. Keep your ego at the docks. Always be a lifelong learner. And you're going to have good days out in the water and you're going to have bad days out in the water. And it doesn't matter how experienced you are or how little experience you have, right? Like fishing at the end of the day, it does come down to luck. Like you can play all your cards right, but still not get bit. And if you don't believe me, go ask some of these experienced anglers like whether it's tuna or rockfish groundfish whatever just enjoy your time out in the water leave your ego at the docks just have a good time out there all right and speaking of a good time so now we are all baited up we are going to have a hour and a half ride i believe out to san onofre which is the power plant we're going to be fishing about a mile away from san onofre and you can actually see it from where we are. Pretty awesome stuff. Overall conditions in the water today, it was very flat and glassy. So it was an enjoyable boat ride all the way there. Without further ado, let's get on to fish. As expected, I know a lot of people say, well, why are you going out of an LA boat? You might as well burn your money then. I mean, I had a lot of fun, so tiny sculpin. These are also known as California scorpion fish. Very venomous spines. Don't get stabbed by one. It will ruin your day. There was a deckhand that was stabbed by one. And I felt really bad because he was in a lot of pain. But he kept working. What a trooper. Shout out to that deckhand by the way. And yeah. We're just bringing this up. It's about 300 feet of water. So not as bad as 500 feet when we're out in the Channel Islands, but hey, still a workout. Alright, now I'm going to bring this little guy up, trying to not get stabbed here. I have not been personally stabbed by a sculpin, 
but I know a lot of people who have, so it is not fun. So it, apparently it's a throbbing pain, and then after that it just feels like your hand got hit with like a 10 pound hammer, so not fun at all, unless you're into that kind of stuff. And it's typically the little guys that yep. pack the yep. most punch. It's kind of like a rattlesnake or any venomous animal, really. It's the small ones that hurt the most. And, yeah, the deckhand did come over and he was like, I got you, bro. So, it was pretty awesome. We released him. He's going to grow into a, a big sculpin, hopefully. Hopefully, he doesn't get caught before he becomes huge. So... I have yet to see a big sculpin, so let me know if you have caught this species before and how big the biggest one you caught was. I am interested genuinely in seeing what the biggest sculpin that was ever caught was because we only see these tiny ones out here. So, And uh, yeah, the deckhand came over and he was like, I got you. So they taught me to just stick your finger in there, in their mouth, uh, get a good grip and then just take the hook out. I was too much of a chicken to do so, so yeah, I just left it up to the professionals to do it, because I'm just an amateur fisherman, man. So we're just going to secure our weight on the in the boat, because you don't want your weight hanging over the boat, because what your weight is, it's a pendulum, and if you know anything about pendulums, they create a lot of force, and what happens when it creates enough force, there goes your entire setup, and some people's setups will cost like a $1,000. I am just going into the bait tank, scooping up a good swimmer, and I'm just putting it on the hook. Too good of a swimmer. Came right out of my hand. Try again. Second time. We're going to get another one here. And we got it. And you want to be as gentle as possible. I see a lot of people just squeezing the life out of their bait. And your hand is abrasive to them. So it's like sandpaper on their skin. Right, so kind of like with sardines, you just want to hook it through the nose. I mean, that's what I do. But if there are any people that are out there that know a better way to do so, let me know because I would love to know what a great way to secure anchovies without ripping them out is, especially like when it comes to tuna fishing because I think that this year it's going to be a lot of anchovies, which I don't know how I feel about that. Here's another tip for beginners also. You just want to keep constant tension on your line as you're dropping the line so you don't cross with other people. This is especially important in ground fishing, rock fishing. And I learned this uh, out of Santa Barbara actually. Shout out to the Stardust. Brought it up. Another baby scoping. Look at him. So cute. You don't want to get stabbed by those top fins right there. It's going to be painful. And speaking of baby sculpin, here's another one. And we caught maybe about 20 to 30 baby sculpin today. Cool. Um, a lot of it was on the anchovy. They didn't really want anything to do with the squid. So at a certain point, we just doubled up on anchovies and then we just doubled up on sculpin. But they were all shorts. We just let them all go. But it was very, very fun. So my personal opinion and this is just my opinion you can roast me on it whatever but the fish that you let go today will grow bigger tomorrow so you don't have to keep every fish that's a keeper and this is just something that i learned from watching so many documentaries but fish take a long time to grow and we are out fishing them that is why in the LA area, you cannot catch big fish. Case in point, look at this baby sculpin. Back he goes. Hope you grow big, little guy. All right, and this is gonna be completely contradictory to what I just said, but this is the first fish that I caught that was a keeper the whole day. And I kept this fish because my grandma likes fish this size like she doesn't like when the fish are too big um so i kept it so i'm gonna give it to my grandma so shortly after we caught that one we dropped it right back down got bit pretty much instantly and we're bringing this 
little thing up so it's not too bad I mean it's baby fish but it's really pretty so it was photographed and then released one thing with ground fishing is that it is a lot of work and having a two-speed reel really helps or a high-speed reel really helps with the retrieving of the line this is about 270 feet of water so about 30 feet more shallow than where we were last but still you can feel the 270 feet especially if you're fishing all day so do your arm workouts grow nice and big and then yeah speaking of growing nice and big i hope this fish lives to grow ginormous because what a pretty fish take a look at this Yeah. Oh, it's a sand right, The best Ooh, fish for one. last. Holy this is crap. arguably yeah. the best fish that I got oh, of yeah. the day. It's called the sand dab. Oh, Pretty cool. Oh yeah. It's a sand dab. Yeah, I know, dude. It's huge. Definitely That's awesome. not a halibut, sir. Hell yeah, dude. These okay. are so good eating, man. You just fry them. Up. Alrighty, California Fishing Life fam. So this is the end of it. I hope you all enjoyed this video and i hope your day got better after watching this video if you weren't having a good day until i see you all again as always take care of yourselves take care of others have a good rest of your day and stay bent